first of all, thanks. And we appreciate that. Um, this is our sixth meeting in a series of meetings. We'll have one more in addition. Um, although we're certainly, you know, if we need to have more, we'll have more. So it's about getting the feedback from everyone to move forward. Before we actually start the meeting, I want to take a quick second and recognize some of our folks. Um, we sure I noticed Mr. Spell outside here. He hasn't made his way in, so he's here today. Um, zoning board, uh, plenty of zoning board, Frank Webb is here. Uh, Jake Forche. That's it, right, Jake? And uh, David Connor. So we've got our great planning and zoning board. We appreciate you guys coming and showing up. Oh, and hey, what, so again, Ranger? Oh, all right. Did you explain? You slipped in. God, I didn't even see you. You have a hat on. You're incognito today. I like it. Well, at least we're supporting five of us. Support Tigers over there. All right. Well, let's talk real quick about um, kind of our meeting format and what we're kind of doing just as a quick review, as we always do. Well, first of all, my name's Christina Joyce Wilson. I think I know the majority of you now. And uh, again, I appreciate you guys uh, taking a, giving a meeting an easy time last time. We need a training kind of built in for me last Monday. But I'm back in action. I'm the Human Resources Director. Um, as I've stated every time, planning is not my forte, so I'm a complete neutral third party. Just here to kind of facilitate our discussion. So you can call me Christina, hey you lady, you got a comment, definitely want to hear from you, you just feel free to call me anything. But Christina, I'm here to facilitate today. Um, the other things I want to kind of share about and talk about is really our meeting format. What are we really going to do? And, you know, as we review at each particular time, and I'm going to step away from the mic and I'm going to talk about that. Our ultimate goal is to have a refined document prepared to allow official action by the Planning and Zoning Board and the Police Bureau by the end of 2011. So that's exactly what our goal is, and that's what the planning goal is. So we had a living document where we put UBC expectations. We had expectations from the group we learned from the exercise. We really talk about landowner rights, which I think we visited about, and we have a legal overview. So those are some key expectations that our panel has come up with. Are there any additions that we want to add to that as we're going forward today? I know this is our sixth meeting, but I always want to give an opportunity. All right, so that's our, really our goal and what we're here to do in our call to action. I also want to mention that let's talk about ground rules a little bit. We all agreed at probably our second meeting about how we were going to deal and interact with together. Again, we've got our ground rules posted. I'm really trying to be a stickler about this start and stop on time. Yeah. Cell phones, just to remind you guys, put those on vibrate. If you have to take it, hey, I understand we're all business people. Just step outside if you don't mind so we don't interrupt others. We're really going to try to follow the agenda um, as it's issued and try to stick to it. Everybody, we want to try to get everybody to participate, especially our panel folks. Um, two big things, we're going to learn, express, explore. Two big things that we're going to talk about. Uh, no sidebar conversations. Um, that really kind of uh, limits interaction. And your comments and your feedback are important, so we want to hear them. And then open, honest, and constructive feedback, and then honor all the time. So again, those are what our Another kind of rule or kind of something that we talked about is the parking lot. We'll actually come back to it later on in the session today, but we've got some things on our parking lot poster from our earlier sessions that we'll come back to. But again, if there's an issue that is not yet addressed or we want to make sure that we spend time on later, I'll add to that parking lot as we go. So that's still in play for today, and we'll come to that. Um, yeah, so we've got a lot to accomplish and a lot to get to today. Let's go ahead and talk about what's on our agenda. What are we going to look to cover? I just bet you guys were very busy last Monday. I heard that we covered the rest of five, six, seven, and eight. So very productive meeting last time. What we're going to look to accomplish today is we're going to cover Article 9, and we're going to cover the Administrative Manual. So those two pieces are going to uh, be an overview. We're going to do the same format. We'll go over a chunk of content, and then we'll open it up for feedback, and we'll take some notes like we've been doing before. So please know that that's happening. Now, what's going to be different about this session is because we are in our wrap-up phases of going through the manual, we're going to have what I call a summary section. So after the administrative manual part, we're going to do a summary. And basically, that's where we go through the parking lot, make sure everything's addressed. Um, we give a second to kind of talk about, hey, let's bring it all together. What are some of the core issues that we kind of focused on together? And then here's what I'm going to ask of our panel. So our panel of advisors, what I'm going to ask is for each of you to kind of say in one minute or two minutes, let's kind of, kind of watch our watch and see what kind of our time frame is then, but say a couple minutes about what did you get out of the session, what did you like, what did you not like, what, you know, just make a statement about your summary of that particular session. We'd like to hear from all of our panel at that point, so just kind of want to give you a heads up, maybe give you a minute. If you really just don't want to say anything, just enter 
introduce yourself and say pass. All right, but I want to give everybody an opportunity on our panel to share some thoughts um, as well. So that's kind of what's going to happen. Now, if that's the case, after we're finished with that kind of summary, we're going to open it up to public comments. Now, I've, I've heard that we've had some good audience. I've had a good audience last time, and the previous times we've had good audiences, and we've got people that want to share some feedback. So we definitely want to have an opportunity for you to share that. So I'm going to try to give a little bit more time for public comments today. Um, in case we want to, you know, be able to have people feel like they can share. We really want that to happen. But here's what we're going to try to do so that we can get to everybody. Um, Natasha, can you want to wave hand over there? Um, what Natasha's doing for us is if you want to speak tonight, all we do is you spoke to Natasha and just ask, put your name. And so I can kind of put them in the order that you can. So that we have, since we're having a little bit more time for our public comments, we're going to make sure that we get to everybody and we get to everybody in the order that they came to. So if you want to talk tonight, we're going to have a little bit more time for that. Let's go ahead and give it to Natasha if you don't mind. Whatever time during our little chat that you want to go to. I'm going to see how many requests we have and kind of see what our allotted time is and try to make sure we're doing that, that, that well. We do want to get those public, that public feedback. So that's kind of what our time frame is going to look like tonight. Um, the other thing I want to make sure that we mention, I think in some previous sessions, we said if you had some questions and meeting our audience or our public uh, forum, if you have some questions, you can turn them in during and we try to answer them. We're still continuing to do that, but just in case you feel like your questions weren't answered, I want to share with you. What we're doing is we're adding that to our feedback. So your questions are being captured. If they're not being addressed and we're not answering them, know that they will be addressed in our feedback um, piece of paper, our feedback wall that we're, kept, we're uh, tracking. And I, I see you that, I want to share that with you, what our intentions are. Um, again, by our August the 22nd meeting, we should have this. This is a document I've referred to before, but we've done some work on it since the last time we talked about it. All of our flip charts, all of our comments that we've talked about, they're created in the document. It's a feedback tool of what this whole UCC panel is doing together. And in that is suggested additions, um, suggested deletions, or concerns or comments. So that's on one side. What's on the other side is going to be the planning um, department's response to that. What are they doing? What are they changing? What's their thought process on it? So you'll have a complete feedback document. Now this will go to the planning and zoning board, but you as a panel, our panel advisory panel, you'll get a copy of this as well. So know that that's coming to you, so I just want to throw that out. Jennifer, did I forget anything with that? Oh. So um, we're trying to make sure that you get lots of information and kind of see how it's going to channel out to you. And know that your feedback, your feedback really does make an impact. Um, just look at, oh, my last little thing, Natasha, I almost forgot, thank you. If you were a panel member and you were not here last time, Natasha's got a packet for you. So if you did not grab a packet from Natasha and you need it, she's got it for you. Natasha's just our, our uh, helpful hand over here, so we'll give her some credit. All right, so with that said, um, we have got a lot to get to today. We definitely want to make sure that we do that. So let's go ahead and start with our Article 9. So Jennifer, I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to you. I can see a light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm so excited. I hope y'all feel the same way. Uh, Article 9 begins on page 341. And we're not going to go into um, a whole, whole lot of detail here. Um, I'm just going to give you the overview of the major things of these sections because most of it has just been in existing code. Any changes we made are mainly uh, for clarification purposes. We did, if you recall, we had the 19 ordinances that we started with, the development related ordinances. And when we combined those ordinances, they each had their own administrative section that dealt with the violations, penalties, decision makers, definitions, things like that. So we took all 19 of those sections and combined them into these few pages. So in my mind, it, it really shows you some of the benefits of what we're doing, that we can go down from that black book and all those separate sections into this. Um, this section does also clearly state everyone's responsibilities, and it also removes some of the old text that uh, we found when we were doing the consolidation process. Okay, so the 
first section is on page 341. And this section is the authority and applicability of the DDC. Obviously, the authority is only for the unincorporated areas of Calcasieu Parish. That's the only thing they cover now. It's none of that is changing. So this does not have jurisdiction in any of the cities, although it does impact some of them to those fringe developments that happen. Uh, this section also contains a grandfather clause, and uh, that's at the top of page 343. And I wanted to point this out because we think that it's a very generous grandfather clause. And I wanted to run through an example. If you remember at an earlier meeting, I pointed out that we have about 39 pending subdivisions right now in our office. And those are basically grandfathered in under our old ordinances. So those are before 2008. So of those, they're, they're all in various stages of the development process. So they all fall under different categories. But for the example I want to use tonight, it, if we look at a subdivision that received preliminary approval after January 1st of 2007, it says here on page 343 that that developer would have 48 months, that's four years, to accomplish the second step in development, and that's to receive engineering plan approval. Once that's done, then they fall under this code as far as the time frames go, and then they would have two years to get final approval of that subdivision. So for a subdivision that started in 2007, and I know that, that one of our panel members is very interested in this because he has some of those that are in the pipeline. For that development that received preliminary approval in 2007, they would have until 2017 to complete the project without having to come under the new guidelines in here that would fall under those old codes. So we feel like that's a very generous grandfather clause, and uh, hopefully that's going to meet the needs of those developers that have been impacted by the economy. On page 343, relationship to other ordinances. And uh, this just states that conflicts are governed by the most stringent code. An example of this would be in uh, overlay districts where there is a more stringent code so that way we would win for sure if we have a legal basis for which code would go. And also the Unified Development Code does not replace private restrictions. Uh, the next section on page 344 is consistency with the comprehensive plan. And again, if you recall that uh, when we did our vision capital planning process, we had a lot of folks ask us how would a comprehensive plan be implemented. So that's why you're seeing comprehensive plan language in here right now. It's just to show you how the plan would be implemented. Rules and interpretation on page 344. This we feel provides clarity to the user. It explains how the various time periods are calculated. It explains that may is optional, that shall is required, that graphics are for illustration only. On page 345, Responsibility for Administration. And this section just runs through and, and tells you what all the various decision makers do. We've got the police jury, planning and zoning board, director of planning, parish engineer, and development review committee involved. And there's a table on page 346 that outlines all of this information. Because again, we're trying to graphically show things. And we feel like it'll make it easier for our clients to know what's going on, who's doing what. So this table tells you everything that you need to know about who's making your decisions. On page 358, there is another section, Rules of Interpretation, and it's redundant and it's going to be deleted. We just have to miss that in our review. And uh, I believe we had that in maybe two sections ago. 9.4.0. So we're just going to delete this place. Also on page 358, we have acronyms and definitions. And this is pretty self-explanatory. It includes all of the previously adopted definitions that were in the 19 codes that we consolidated. It also um, consolidated some acronyms that were existing in codes and some new acronyms to help people navigate through. And there's also a graphic that's included in the height definition, and I know that's one of our parking lot items. And just very quickly, we have a section on severability, enforcement, violation, penalty, notification of violation, and deadline dates. And all of this 
they gave this painting those 19 ornaments that they were all very similar in nature, we just consolidated them. Uh, we do have a couple of sections, like uh, in the flood plain section, I believe, where it was left alone because we have to get higher approvals than in this situation, but for the most part, everything's been consolidated here. And that's all I'm out of work for So, comments, uh, feedback, thoughts uh, from our panel, uh, Steve panel. Again, we'll get to public comments at the end of our time together. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Uh, just so that everybody can hear, we want to make sure that we're doing microphones tonight. So thank you, Matt. No, Matt, go ahead. I guess my first question on Article 9 is, is and maybe you can give me a little bit of Call the black text compared to the red text. I mean, how much of this stuff is 20 years old? How much of it's uh, five years old? How much of it is new? I would say that, and, and Mr. Vickers can correct me if I'm wrong, I would say that the bulk of it is 20 years old. We, we may have a smidgen. I, I know there's one place where we reference some civil penalties, and that was enacted in the last few years, but for the most part, the language is pretty accurate. Uh, and, uh, and again, we have comments that we're going to send tomorrow uh, in reviewing this. And in a nutshell, it, after reading this and, and digesting it, it it's, it, it's scary. And the reason this section is scary to me is, uh, and again, this is certainly nothing personal to me, but I'm not involved with the staff, but it, it's it's given the director, and this whole book references the director all the way through this thing. Mean, not to not anybody's abusing power, but it, it certainly lends itself to that. And I think it just opens the door to potential corruption. I mean, the, the director, whoever that may be, uh, has a very heavy hand, whatever happens in this parish, for being uh, even above the jury. The way I read it, I hope I'm wrong. That's, I mean, we can get into all kinds of detail. One, one minor detail, no, that's not minor, but uh, in this uh, development of the community, it's all pointed by the uh, there's, there's no room in there. It's all stacked, and, and I certainly think that, that should be opened up to, to uh, you know, people that are in the business. But, I mean, you know, again, all the details here, and I'll, I'll open it to the other questions. If I could just respond a couple things. The first thing is the director. I know he had mentioned that in the last week. I think he said it a couple times that he had concerns about the power that the director has. And, and I just wanted to point out that the director makes administrative decisions. And, and those things are in here because we hope to expedite things for developers and applicants. But in no way, shape, or form is it meant to take away any power from the planning and zoning board or the police charge. And in all cases where an administrative decision is made, it can be appealed to the planning and zoning board or the police jury and go through the regular process. So I don't believe there's anywhere in here where the director actually takes that power away. If, if there is and it's in these documents, we would definitely look at it because that's not our intent to do that. And um, regarding the DRC, it is a SAC panel, and I believe that it is supposed to be appointed by the um, parish administrator. If it's not, I'll check on that. Um, we do ask for other folks to join us. Uh, when we have subdivisions that are on there, we ask for the help of to come and sit in. We ask Pat Landon to do this, to do this in when we have the incident that affect his area of jurisdiction. The meetings are public. Um, when we have DRC meetings, we posted the calendar on the police group's website. And applicants and the public are always welcome to this event. But I appreciate the comment. And Matt, just to make sure, I just put the heavy hand comment in the more authority, and then I put the, you know, Jennifer mentioned about the approval process. Make sure that we capture that. Well, the only comment is that even if this is, some of this stuff is 20 years old, that doesn't necessarily make it good. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pam, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yeah. Okay. Um, on the authority for the uh, planning director, which is put throughout the uh, UDC quite often, I think over the years we've experienced that there's a lot of process that we feel that we can expedite much quicker if we be left within the administration to do that. And certainly, we've done it in many other instances through our planning money work, we get them more authority do this right now, always bring the public pleasure. So that's the years of experience that we, we um, put that together to make it work for everyone for everyone to be friendly. And as far as the um, development review committee, I mean that's been another learning curve here. We want to return that all the staff members were talking on these developments that have on every department. And that was a um, committee that was put together to again expedite for subdivisions or for plans that are going to I guess one of the things that concerns me is I understand <laughs> is that I understand that um, um, can you just for the audience just state your name and, and Tommy, uh, anyway what concerns me is this and, and an example is, is on, a, on a project on Lake Street that we had that basically gets denied and then we go back in and we get major change or whatever that's called. And then it's okay. We save that person thirty to fifty thousand dollars. So this document with all the pages in it should should basically speak to that. So it's not basically, you know, well, you know, oh that's okay and we're not gonna make you do a six on twelve pitch roof. We're not gonna you know, these development corridors and all that stuff, someone should be able to read this and say, you know, I'm going to develop right here because it makes sense for me. They should have an architect go in, spend all the money to do it, and then it go, well, no, you, you got to have, you know, art in the front, you got to have this, you got to have that, you got to have this. But hey, you know what we'll do for you? We'll change it. How many people walk away without even going to that stuff? Now, I know that I can go to that stuff because I, I have that relationship. But it's, 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 it's concerning because, and I know what y'all are trying to do, you're trying to make it, make it easier, but you've complicated it so much on the front end that why are you going to do it? You know, it just makes, you know, it, 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 we should be able to read this document and it is what it is. So if you have a lay down in your heart and you have to conquer it, then you have to conquer it. But someone's going to come in and say, well, I'm doing two acres of land on here. Well, guess what I'm not doing? And we're, we're going to miss, we're missing the boat. Because a lot, and a lot of people, unlike some people on here, do not like confrontation. And they're just not going to do it. So that, you know, I understand trying to streamline the process again. And, and it does make it easier. And I'm concerned a little bit with the power. But in the same sense, we shouldn't be going, having to go there. It should be these are the rules. This is what we're comfortable with. And let's roll. All right, so Tommy, what I have is um, complicated on the front end. Your concern is that people won't ask. I mean, you've got relationships with people you've got and you're concerned about others, and that um, those are just not going to do at that point. Well, so. it's, 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 it's basically, this is what I feel like, and, and it's basically we've got to go in and basically plead our case. These are the landowners' problems. You know, and I understand restriction. I'm not going there. But I also don't understand $35,000 to $50,000 worth of extra stuff that basically we can go in and just, hey, please let us, let us do it this way. And so we spent time, we spent this, we have an architect that drew it up one way and then we've got it another way. We've done all this stuff and the project could be able to already go and people could be working on it making money. Um, there's just some kind of supplemental information that was referenced 
This is something that the police street updates very often as roads become public through um, paving or if a developer was to come and ask for a private road as part of a subdivision development, we would have to have the police street take action to add it to the formal road. And that's it for the
is as comprehensive as the money that we spend on doing this. I know it's a whole lot. I think it should be looked at, and I'm, and not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about somebody from out of town doing it. I think somebody local should take a really hard look at this and, and see what the true cost is going to be to the government. Okay. I think that that's a fair comment. All right. Uh, Tom, fair. can we go get Russ first, Tom? Huh? Fair, really. No, I think that's a fair request. Okay. <laughs> Mine's just quick. What is that first item on the list? The first item on the list is height 35 miles. So it was talking about, was it trees or signage? Uh, it was Sorry. The height, height of the building. Yeah. So that's the height of the building. And we address it. Tommy? Uh, along those lines of that, we have the pleasure of our commission, our real estate commission uh, leader was the I guess the administrator of St. Tammany Parish, and they did their UDC, so their whatever it is. And one thing it did do, this is what concerns all of us, is it shut down work. So the financial end of this thing, I think we need to know. And I understand what we're trying to do here, slow it down so we can catch it up and all that stuff. But if we're not doing it, if we're not growing, we're dying. And that's, that is the bottom line. The sewer, I know we've got it pushed off and we're working on it, but why we're talking about 552 pages with no sewer plan is, is, is beyond me. Because that, that is the issue. And we're going to turn around and do these developments. If y'all remember $35,000 on the project, the project that we talked about for the asphalt company was like $50,000. What's that going to do? He wasn't going to do. He wasn't going to do the project. The only reason why I got wind of is because his sister works in the real estate office, and I went down and talked to Jennifer and everybody. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh yeah, okay, we well, can do that. Is the major concern? I know we've got 39 subdivisions in the pipe where no one's doing anything. But do you think anybody's going to do anything when you're adding one more cost? That and. I guess my next question is, what, what is, where are we going from here? I understand we have a meeting on August the 22nd that you all are going to give us our comments next to y'all's comments. So at that point, are we done? Or are we going to be able to hash that out? Because that, because this is, because what will end up happening is, a couple of things will get done, and the next thing you know, we're going to have this thing. And that's when everything's going to blow up, okay? Because you have people that are cons very concerned, okay? So we get it, and then y'all give us a week to look at it. That ain't going to work. Because this is huge. I know it's huge for y'all. Y'all been working on it for four years. This is huge for us, too. And we're, we're concerned that we're going to be out of, of a job. So... Do not, please do not give it to us on August 22nd and say, oh, we're bringing it to planning and zoning on September the 2nd, because that's when it's all going to break loose. Okay, we've been, we've been, I know you all been listening, and what I'm concerned is, is there's not going to be very many changes, and that's not going to, that's not going to be good. And that's the fear of these guys right here. Thank you. 
on the August 22nd meeting so we can know exactly what changes have been made. Well, we, we should have some time to look at it before we leave. But I, I, I mean, I know you're on a, you're on a time frame, I understand. But this is this isn't this isn't the playground in fourth grade. You've got some people that are very, very concerned, and I'm, I'm just telling you that we, we need to have some time to look at what changes are so it doesn't blow up. You know, we're all in here for the right for the same reasons, but when we feel like it's getting shoved down our throat, it's going to it's it, it's not going to be nice. You know. I guess you know we we've got time I'm not worried about the feedback, I'm worried but, about the changes. But what, what changes would cause things to blow up and then not happen? I, 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 I can't answer that question. What I want to see is, I don't want to see the Obama health care plan and then it get passed in. I don't want to see that. I want to see what y'all plan on doing so that we can look at it like sane individuals and have another meeting to talk about it. Because that, that's what's fair. This is a public forum. So, so yeah, you got out of our concerns, but you did a quarter of them. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, planning and zoning's voting on it, and it's at the police jury. Uh, Tommy, if I hear your request, is that you're concerned about time frame for review. And although we don't have any direct answers about when it's going to be in your hands, I can tell you that it will definitely take your request under consideration and will understand your concern about time frame. Yeah, I'd like to respond to that because the police jury pointed the panel and I, I want to try to represent the intent. Um, this actually goes back, way back, to after the Vision Cal issue with a, a perception, I don't believe it's the truth, but it's a perception that nothing was done in the public, nobody was met with. So we basically restarted and said, let's take a big chunk of this, an important chunk, and revisit it, go in more detail, and point it all of you. So this document, it's actually been done since, when did we have our first meeting? Uh, yeah, roughly. Okay. As of that day, that was several, several months, maybe even longer than that, of staff work to put it out in the public. So I think it's incorrect to say there's no time. It's been out ever since. The panel was here to say, on all of these things, here's where we suggest there's changes. But the idea that it's not been out, it's just, I don't think that's accurate. That's not what I'm saying. Not well, I look what you're saying. No, what I'm saying is, is I don't want y'all to give us a document on August 19th and expect for us to come in here and comment on it on August 19th. You got the document in May? No, 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 no. The changes, whatever's going to happen. But if you have happening. the document, is my point. You'll know the changes. We've been at every meeting. I guess it, it just seems I don't know like the changes. It. I've got a parking lot. That's what I've got. We've got a parking lot. I know that we've made comments. I know we're going to get a piece of paper that says, that says, hey, this was your comments. This is what we're going to do, and this is what we're not going to do. Okay. I, I want, there will be plenty of time for that. It just, I think it was a misrepresentation to say that nothing in here has been done until then. There, there will be plenty of time. Okay, then, then I apologize if that's the way it came off. This is the bottom line. We need to get a document that we can review before we've got three days to go to planning right. and zoning and all that stuff. You're requesting more time to look at the changes okay. that are being We want to be able to read them. Well, yeah. I also like to understand that part of the reason why we see our, our timeline, which you don't see anything after August 22nd, is that we're going to use August 22nd as a good game on how to move forward. So I, I understand that you have this perception that the staff is only going to make 25%. Of the changes I just want to see what it is. And, you know, my thought, and I even told Mr. Robichaud last week, is that I hope to make so many changes that y'all are impressed with the document come August 22nd. So don't go into August 22nd with the perception that you need more time because we're doing our best as a staff to incorporate everything that we I understand, but it's so only fair. So just know that nothing is set in stone after August 22nd is what I'm saying. Okay. Right. And, and Tommy, I'm just going to share as a facilitator that your request is definitely noted, uh, noted. I definitely feel where you're coming from. You just want some time to be able to review it. So definitely got the request there. All right, so Matt, we'll comment real quick before we go to our summary. Okay, I, uh, as far as the timeline goes, uh, I, I'm 
obviously feel that this thing needs to be heavily reviewed legally and an economic impact study. Yes. And in order to do that, you need to take those two issues out of the parking lot and put them on the interstate and let's go down the road with it. And it, it's not going to get done by January 1st. And, and I guess my recommendation to the jury, to the administration, or any police jury, is do not vote on this thing until those two things are done and everybody fully understands the legal impact of this deal and the economic impact of this deal. And that, that is what's on. Russ, I turn it over to you. Is um, you know, just for our um, audience and our cameras, just like to go ahead and get you to state um, your name and uh, what organization or what interest you represent here, and then kind of your feedback and thoughts. Um, before I turn it over to Russ, I do have two because we did ask um, some folks that weren't going to be here. We asked them to share their feedback and their thoughts. Um, I've got one from Troy Woodstock, who is the at-large citizen from the West Side. And um, in, basically, I'm not going to read his whole email, but basically what he said, 
was that he really feels like the UDC claim concept is definitely going in the right direction. And it's going to really bring Pocahontas forward. He said that um, he understands the issue of the half acre versus one acre lot, um, and he agrees with the one acre concept. Um, but for the most part, he feels like the plans going uh, are getting to a great starting point. He just kind of commented about a great job, keep it up. So that's kind of his thought process on that. So he definitely wanted to comment again on that paper issue. And Jeff Kumla also um, sent in um, some feedback and thoughts. I want to share Jeff's as well. Um, you know, he said thanks for the opportunity to be part of the process. He appreciated being able to take part of the crafting of the updated code. Um, he said as an architect, he often has to explain how the code works. Um, he did talk for a break, um, you know, a whole paragraph about, well, the fact that I agree in principle to the intent of the requirements, I disagree that the code essentially stipulates that the buildings look like houses. He felt like upping the standard on how the business looks seems to be more fitting than requiring it to look like a house. Um, but over the long run, um, he said he likes the standard. He thinks that these standards will improve the look of major corridors, which he thinks will further facilitate growth. And as a citizen, he welcomes that. He further continued to say um, he didn't necessarily see the impact of higher stand standards in heading, uh, implementing growth or heading it um, to happen. He said markets just adjust themselves constantly. And, um, and he said basically, as for an owner who wants to do a nicer projects, these districts will provide some support and reassurance to them by requiring their neighbors to meet the same standard. Um, he did have a whole other paragraph that addressed his concern about the public sewer system, so he did bring up that up and talk about that. Um, he said, this is, I'm just going to read this to you, he says, uh, civilization needs some ground rules and planning to maintain order. Most folks don't like being told what to do or how to do it, but it helps us all be good neighbors, which contributes to a higher quality of life. Some areas of this parish have already painted themselves into a corner by the lack of planning. It happened because no one thought of a plan for growth, and growth in these areas um, will be forever stifled. And he talks about the need for a public sewer system. He's happy to hear that the parish is working on the implementation plan for extending the invisible type of services and growth. And he understands that sewer systems don't exactly attract people like new schools. Um, they're part of the growth equation. So he talked about the growth part of the life. He really appreciated the fact that he was able to participate in the panel. So those are um, two uh, folks from our panelists that weren't able to be here tonight but did want to share some feedback. So Russ, can we start with you? And I think just a minute to two minutes each, if we have some time for that. Russ? Um, Russ Adams, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it up a little bit more. Yeah, it takes a minute to pick up. All the way up. And Russ, um, Russ, you're an advisory person on the advisory panel. So that's a special distinction for you. Uh, Russ Adams in the city of uh, Lake Charles. Uh, I've only been in the area for um, just less than two years. This has been very educational for me and very worthwhile. Not only the discussion, the technical discussion about the stuff in the manual here, but being able, being able to meet the folks here and to listen to the public comments. Thank you very much for the opportunity to do that. Thanks, Russ. <laughs> Harvey Lissett, um, current president of the Louisiana Contractors Association, and I'm here representing the home builders of Southwest Louisiana. I think the four major items that concerned me when we started the process was transparency, and I think we'll all have to answer the success of that issue. Do we all feel that it's been transparent? Public's had input, panels had input. Uh, is the document logical? I think on that one, I, I think we, we have to score a, a win. Uh, when you take 19 different documents over a tremendous period of time and you put them together in a concise document, uh, even if we do not all agree with every single item, at least it's there, it's logical, it makes sense, and you have one place to find the answer, uh, both for the administrators and the people that are using it. So I, I would look at that as, as a uh, significant success. Responsiveness, I think Tommy and Matt and uh, the Board of Realtors, I, I think we have to give them a, a, a vote of uh, Thank you for their tremendous hard work. I think that they've gone above and beyond to track the responsiveness. And, and quite honestly, I think that the administration and Jennifer and her team have 
going out of their way to, to be responsive. And I think all of us, including those guys, are looking to see it in writing that, that you have been responsive. And then finally, uh, my last note was impact on growth, and uh, I made a note to myself to be determined, but, but realistically, it is an item that, that we need to look at how is it going to impact the parish, the developers, and the citizens. And to do that, you have to know if it's going to have an economic impact on the area. Um, and then I think the last thing is, is a reminder that unlike the Ten Commandments, um, it's not set in stone. We have a responsive administration. Uh, we have a very responsive group of police jurors. And it's not something that is indelible forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And I'm Philip Busby, and uh, I guess the reason I was asked to, you know, to sit on this panel was uh, basically because I'm representing, you know, homeowners, you know, people in subdivisions that would end up being impacted by a development coming into a particular area, you know, stuff that's already existing. Well, one of the big things that I was looking for when, when we started this process is to make sure the language is in there, you know, that would allow protection for existing homeowners from something that comes in that's totally incompatible you know, with an existing subdivision. I believe that language is in there. I believe that process is, is, is provided, you know, within the old standards as well as, you know, the, the UDC, you know, to provide that protection for homeowners. So, so I feel good about that. Tommy and, and uh, uh, the rest of you, I've, I've been sitting here listening to this and I've learned a tremendous lot, you know, amount, you know, by sitting on this panel because I don't see this stuff they I'm a junkie public, if you, if you will. And uh, but the one thing that I that I see is probably the biggest hurdle that we're going to have to come over is infrastructure. As with anything, you know, you can't grow unless you have proper infrastructure, and proper foundation. Sewer system is key in this area. And uh, but at the same time, you know, when you look at that and see how it develops and how you get that and stuff, how do you pay for it? So we need to make sure we, we don't put the cart before the horse, that we allow the time, you know, ample time to, you know, to discuss this thing and to and build a good program here, a good document, something that, that takes into consideration just how this is going to impact economic development in this area. Because right now, the folks in Washington, D.C. are doing the best they can to destroy our economy. Amen. We need to make sure that, that, that we're not adding to that. And that's the biggest concern that I have right now as a, as a homeowner in Calvary Parish. Uh, yeah, I would love to see the development. I would love to see it come in. But you can't build it on sand. So I'd like to caution, not only this panel, but, uh, but the folks in planning and development, you know, we have really got to make sure we get a good foundation here. And if it takes a little more time to to get through this thing and get the things in here that we need that everyone can live with, then I said take the time. There's no time like the present. John Lowry, represent the Louisiana Engineering Society. I appreciate being here and involved in this whole process. It's been very interesting uh, <clears throat> seeing the interaction between the administration, the panel, comments from the public. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, Mr. Bissett said it. I'd like to say what he said again, but I'm not that great to speak. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dale, everything, and, and the other gentlemen, two gentlemen. Uh, I'm looking, really looking forward to seeing how this finishes, how we follow through on everything that's been done so far today. Thank Thanks. Thanks. Tom Mason and I uh, represent the uh, Rose Association, and I guess, you know, I've been and I thank you all for allowing me to be a part of this. I know that I'm, my blood pressure has been up in the past since May. But anyway, uh, I'm concerned. And I'm concerned about going in the right direction for, for affordable housing. You know, uh, we, we can do a lot to affect property value. If we're pushing people where the infrastructure is, 
that property value is going to go up and no one's going to be able to afford it or the regular person is going to be able to afford it. Conversely, out, out in the unincorporated areas, it's going to be more to develop that as well. So, you know, the sewer thing, y'all heard me. I'm not going to say it anymore. That's the foundation, and that's what we need to, we need to be really focused on. The other thing is the financial implications of this thing. I really, you know, I'm not, I'm not a numbers guy, and, you know, I know in my simple little mind that you add money to a project, that's going to cost somebody some money, which could not develop or could develop, and then they got to charge a rate to be able to make that happen so then no one will be able to rent it. We are, we are in a area that we basically have a $30,000 salary. You know, we are what we are. You know, and I think we need to be very careful in what we're doing and slowly implement some of the some of the stuff along with sewer, which I wasn't going to say that again. The one thing that is not addressed in here is how, and I know this is a, it has to be a give and take relationship, is how the parish and the cities are going to work together. Because it's not happening at all. And I know, and I've had conversations with, with, the, with the parish administration on what's going on there. Yeah, and I'm going to just say this and I'm going to leave it alone, but. $25 million, $20 million project here on Nelson Road, which has done fabulous for that area, has not affected the property values in Crestview, which I can say that because I'm a real estate agent and I know. Caddy corner to a warehouse with a brick front. So we're gonna we're gonna restrict all this stuff in, in the parish. And then when people are driving through, and I, I wasn't here for the sign thing, I wish I would have been here. When people are driving through Lake Charles, okay, or Sulphur, or Westlake, or whatever, and you've got a billboard with a garbage can saying, don't litter. But then you go out in the unincorporated areas, and it's got the real nice 35-foot signs and all that stuff. What is that doing? When we're not working together with the cities, you know, working together on infrastructure, that's the, that is the bottom line. And I know we kind of look at it, this is ours and this is theirs, but the taxpayers, we're all paying into that one thing. And it's infrastructure. It's infrastructure. It is hook it up, put in the road, and let's roll. That's what's going to make the growth happen. Well, Tommy, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm Wallace Dangles. I'm a developer. You know, I really just want to have a good thing to add to all these comments. Okay, boss, we appreciate you being here. Matt Red, parts of this have been there. Parts of it are done. Yeah. Uh, I think, again, the legal and economic studies will wash some of that out. Uh, I think it's a lot to, to, to take on one time. I don't think this panel, I don't think they are it's capable of doing it. I think we took it when we took it. Caught what we caught. I'm afraid there's, there's landmines in here that we don't know, we don't know what they are. Uh, I'm not saying that, that, that anybody on the staff or, or, or anyone on the jury is trying to do something that, that, that's uh, under, under the table, but, but I think that for years to come, we don't know what they have to do. And it's scary. Uh, Rich Rhode Island uh, represents the Real Estate Association. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you all, everybody, uh, for allowing uh, all of us and my colleagues to remain away as much as we have. Uh, but I hope that you all understand that um, um, as we noted, that th th this, is, this document has a lot that impacts our industry directly. Uh, one could argue it's the biggest uh, thing to impact our industry in many, many years, Riga. But, but then this, and, and so we're, we're, we want to be involved and we want our voices to be heard. I also want to say that I agree with Matt, that, um, uh, as I earlier said, I'm not quite sure what our role was here, and, um, and 
it, it, it's impossible to digest it all this. And, um, I think in hindsight, I would have liked to have a little background on, on how old this was, what of it is recent and not, and what of it is stuff we've been living with all our lives, and what of it's not, and, and uh, because some stuff, maybe I learned that you know, the selection of trees has always been around, and what's the common person hearing that the government tells you what kind of trees you can plant, that's a pretty strange thing. But maybe that's the way all those colonies work. You, 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 you don't know. I mean, so, that's all I have. Which one is it? Thank you for your help. Oh, yeah. Scalin Tiller, I'm representing the Charlie Tiller Committee. I'd like to thank the uh, parish for giving us an opportunity to have a voice in this. Um, really, I've learned a lot. It's been educational. I've sit on this panel with a group of guys. I, I feel they're experts in their field. Um, sitting in and listening in has really brought a lot of things to like to me. Um, one of the things talked about, uh, Mr. Buzzy talked about the sewer and stuff like that. Right now it might not be feasible, but in the future it possibly will be. So I look forward to an adoption of the utility allocation uh, so we know what these utilities are going to in the future. And we're not trying to backtrack and redesign things. So I look forward to that. Uh, again, thank you. Okay, perfect. Well, Calvin, I, I just want to personally extend um, a quick appreciation to all our panel members. Again, I, I'm, I'm coming from the fact that we've got these diverse minds around us, and I appreciate that so much, and that everybody felt comfortable or was talking from their perspective and, and kind of brought it. That's the whole point of our panel, so I really appreciate that. Um, let's go ahead and take some time now and open it up to our public. Um, oh, sure, right. And I didn't necessarily give our chance for any of our planning uh, department or any of our other parish folks. So if, if anybody else wants to make a comment, you can certainly do that. I just want to thank the panel. Uh, I can't say enough on behalf of the whole staff. I want to thank them too. They've done a great job. Y'all have given us a lot of good information. We spent a lot of time on things you could be doing. You could be doing other things with your time. I can assure you, everything that y'all commented on has been received and has been thought through and will be. And the feedback will be there, and everybody will know where we're coming from. But I want to assure you all that. I can tell you from talking to several jurors, it's very meaningful to them. Several here tonight, others have come before. Um, it's, it's no, not really the right time to get into a lot of feedback at this point. Maybe August 22nd, but one thing I do want to comment on until it gets to the current thing that is valid is the sewer issue. And we don't have all the answers yet. It's, it's, it's the toughest challenge I, I know I've seen since I've been here for 16 years. But I will say there's good progress, and not just hypothetical. The police jury has passed an inspection program to assure that what's already out there is running properly. That's not going to be easy. We'll have hiccups, but that's a big first step. Secondly, uh, it is our intent before this is passed, or along with it, because it does make sense to have it in here, is to know developers and others to know what the rules are regarding sewer. And although it's a little early, we feel pretty strong that our recommendations will include something along the lines of requiring with a certain acreage and so forth, and that there's a, at least a community system. Uh, and you know, the standards can be explained. But we realize we're going to have to commit as a parish to probably operate those. That's come up and Developers and others should have that question. It's a good question. And the costs need to be there. One of you said that earlier. You've got to pay for it. But if it's done right, it's sort of it's not the ideal to have a lot of community systems. But if we make sure that we do that, everybody knows the rules of the game. And it can stop the problem of sewage, uh, the fluid into the rivers. It's, it's really a big problem. And we do that in such a way that there's no way going to end this growth. It's Paying for what cost is there to treat water. It's just a public cost. But that's a legitimate concern. And very, um, it's a high priority. And I just want you all to know that. Uh, we aren't going to shift that operational cost to somebody who's not going to be around 20 years later. We realize that's part of local government instruction, but it's a challenge. So, uh, with that, I'll just uh, again thank everybody. It really does mean a lot that you put your time in. Well, what I want to go ahead and do is now turn it over because we want to make sure that we definitely leave time. I know that each session we've 
only had about 15 to 20 minutes of public comment.
four years. And I appreciate the public comment extended that. That was probably several of us, you know, had a concern with that. You've been dealing with it four years, and you had an hour and a half of public comment. Now, you can say what you want, well, no, we didn't. We had all that stuff with vision calculus shoot, but I was under the understanding that this is not vision calculus shoot, which a lot of it is vision calculus shoot. So my concern with that 2011 deadline is why. I've heard that we've had this same thing for 35 years. Some of this document is 20. And if we take another year or six months to get it, to get it right, and to make sure that we do not stagnate growth, because I agree with what Tommy said 100%. We look at communities, everybody's, you know, Brian, I'm sure you're dying for more money in the coffers. When development stops, sales tax, everything else, you know, stops with it. So uh, just uh, one thing that I wish you'd look at is uh, with the deadline, and I know you want to get this done, but hey, if it takes us another year, you know, who cares? I think, you know, I think the parish has done an unbelievable job under uh, Mr. Pickers. If I agree with him every time, I can guarantee you no. The one thing that he was always uh, fair and continued to push us in a, you know, in a positive direction. So, just want to close and say, uh, with the director, quotation mark, Czar, if Jimmy would agree to stay another 20 years, I wouldn't have any problem with that. <laughs> So, Jimmy, you get up on that challenge for another 20? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody has these prizes. <laughs> but, but, Tim, I like the attorney um, reference to, you know, we're captioning having discussions in the court, but then we can go have some beers afterwards. So, I'm sure you're buying somewhere else. I'm coming. Oh, you, you're the one that mentioned it. I'm coming with you. <laughs> you got the money, you're with the pair. Oh. <laughs> So see if you want to feel on coming to see me in line. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, I'm Steve Floyd and I represent Pam Floyd. That's my wife. And uh, we have a house right over here in the Weaver Park area. Um, I have an interest in this discussion, I guess, personally, but also I have a real estate company, and so I have an interest along those lines, and represent a few developers and that sort of thing. And uh, it's been a it's been an interesting. I've uh, made a few of these meetings, and it's been really interesting. And uh, I appreciate the hard work. I, I guess I I have a better appreciation for what the administration does now than I did before. I also appreciate some of my brethren and the passion that they've expressed. And, and um, I just wanted to stop just a second and ask, uh, ask the administration, um, and I'm not sure who would want to answer this. It might be easiest for Mr. Vickers to answer since you're on your way out. But, <laughs> I guess my question is, okay, we fast forward to January 1st, and the UDC, we ironed out our differences, made a few changes, um, everybody accepted whatever is going to happen. What is life like then? And let me make a comment and then I'd love to hear feedback. But my comment is, my question, well, I have a question. Is it that the develop, like, it, it will continue to slow development, which is okay in the administration's mind, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just asking. It's okay because what people need to understand and what development in the future needs to understand is that we have to be better and we have to be different and it takes time to swallow a change and ultimately we will all be better for it. Um, and this swallowing period takes time and it's okay. It's like the risk is worth the benefit in that sense. And I'm wondering if that's the thought process. And I'm wondering if that's very balanced uh, to 
In other words, for the sake of our present need for development. In other words, is, it, is that question clear? Is that a, it, did I throw out a question that's like everybody's going, I have no idea what you're talking about? I'm just wondering, what is your thinking along those lines? Is there a period of swallowing very difficult, restrictive environment? Uh, is it worth it because we need it that badly? Your comments. Thank you.
And so, you know, I've learned from those experiences, and I think that are going to help make this process go to the next level. So, again, I so appreciate the comments and thoughts. Um, Ms. Gibson. I'm Georgie Gibson. I live right outside the city limits in four country and states. And I'm, I'm thankful that you're having this meeting. But the thing I was disappointed in was that if I hadn't had some friends who knew about it, I wouldn't be here. I just feel like the citizens of Capuchin Parish need to be better informed about this and put in some input from the people. For instance, each police juror to have a um, a meeting with his constituents advertising the fact what's, what is being planned to do and get input from their people that they represent. Because I said, I wouldn't have known about it. I just found out about it the other day and came right to a meeting. And something else I wanted to ask I just wanted to say, I, I definitely agree that we should not be doing this so fast. I just said, I would like to know more about it, and this is my second meeting, and um, I think other citizens really need to the, to the input, because very few citizens of our capture parish know about this, and I think, because we the people, the government is supposed to be of the people, by the people, and for the people, but yet we haven't gone out to the members of capture parish and ask what their input is. You can have a few representatives, which is right, but I just firmly believe before anything is done seriously, that the top two pair of citizens in each one of the police jurors districts should be informed, and they should tell their citizens what it is, informational meeting, and get their input. And also I wanted to ask, is there going to be, is the parish taking any money from federal grants? Not this time. Because as I said, I think I said at the last meeting, the more you depend on the government, the more you owe them. You have to do what they tell you to do, just like some presidential candidates for the money. Thank you.
in my more sense of thinking, I, as, a, as a property owner, I would prefer it to say something like, I, we acknowledge that Apache Parish Police Jury, uh, Planning and Zoning Board and Director designee shall protect private property rights and may impose such conditions as it deems necessary in order to serve the public interest and welfare. Yes. And in going through the document, and, 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 and I didn't study every last word because it is has been pointed out quite extensively, but I only found one place in there where it talked about preserving uh, property rights. So I, I think that, that the, the, I'm trying to make the point that the police here and my representatives, you guys are there to represent me and protect my stuff. Yes. And when you totally and completely control somebody's property, they have they have, you know, very little very little recourse. So and in, in some cases it's necessary, but then for what level of detail, you know, do you want to control their property? Uh, there was a like one a while ago they said the planning director makes administrative decisions. Uh, and it's not to take any powers away from the planning and zoning board or the police jurors. But it takes away whatever they're doing is going to limit or take away property rights. So I'm just using that for an example. Somewhere in this wording, it would be, uh, it would give us a comfort level if, if, if this document showed some concern for the individual property rights and not 100% or 99% about you own it, but we totally control it. You fill out the paperwork, and then we'll decide what you can do and how much it costs. Uh, and I guess, uh, again, I would, I would ask that, that the committee, as you talked about earlier in your friends, that you give serious consideration, uh, being just on everybody's mind, to do whatever you can to put together a similar panel uh, to, to enhance or move forward parish-wide sewage to a sales tax. I mean, a sales tax is a user tax. And I don't know anybody that, that's, that's not a user. So in some, some form or fashion, I believe that with the interest in the, in the number of people you guys represent, I think you guys can jack this thing up and get it moving. Uh, and, and like you said, we, I don't think we'd even be here if, if we had parish white suit. So again, we appreciate your guys, you know, everybody here's time and interest. And, and I hope this is not the last time that uh, issues like this are discussed. I hope this is kind of a professional thing. Again, thank you for your time and talk. And Charlie, the only thing I'm going to ask is you have some specific wording on one particular area. Um, if you could email that to Jennifer, um, that would be great. I just put that specific word but I didn't get all of it. Okay. Well, and again, I would like to see it on all of the, what I read you was on all of the applications in the entire section. So this is an example that would be nice if you could put that on the application itself. Thank you. Well, if you can email that, we'll consider the request. I can do that. So, we'll consider the request. All right, so Jeff, um, as again, we're going to have Jeff um, share his comments or thoughts. We have any other public? I'm afraid I'm going to be uh, anticlimactic here. It's more in the line of a logistical uh, uh, a question. Uh, when you do the next iteration of the document uh, for tracking purposes and ease of tracking, from my own perspective, and I'm sure others here today, that if you will show the original verbiage and what it has been changed to in the document, that we don't be just given the change that we be given the, the original verbiage left there and the change for verbiage. That's good. Thank you. Hmm.
um, to give you at that point. So if you come in early or unless you can come uh, with your books, then we can give you the new inserts or the, the new uh, process. And then the other thing is to keep in mind that August 15th date I kind of referred to earlier. In order to make sure that we can have all your comments put into the August of 22nd um, reprint, we need to have your comments, any lasting things. I know we've got a ton of comments so far in these six sessions, but if you have any additional comments that you want to make, please make sure to have them to Jennifer by August the 15th. That's a really big um, kind of determinant factor for us to be able to print, have those things ready for the 22nd meeting. Um, I understand Tommy's concern, or one of the things that he mentioned, I think a couple other folks mentioned it as well, that is about our feedback sheet. And um, know that that's being developed, we're putting finishing touches. We have, of course, have to add tonight. So we'll try to get that and commit to you to have that out as soon as possible. Jennifer, is that fair to say? Um, spoke for your review. So know that that's going to happen. So August of 22nd is our next meeting. Um, we're going to review the updated draft of that meeting, kind of open it up again for comments. Um, but that's kind of where our, our 22nd for meeting focus is going to be. Jennifer, anything that I left out for that? All right. Well, that's kind of where our next steps are. Um, the only other thing that I want to kind of share is just an appreciation. So um, a simple thank you. Uh, Brian, do you want to share any lasting comments before I kind of wrap it up? Okay. Well, I'm just going to say any questions, comments, you guys know how to get to Jennifer, Jimmy, Pam, Wes, their team. Um, obviously, you get it through the phone number or you can call, uh, look at cppj.net. But I just want to end with an extreme appreciation for everybody taking the time and effort to come kind of share what you feel passionate about. I think everybody's here for a reason, and we appreciate it. So I just wanted to share that as we wrap up. And I have to say, not even 7.30. So, guys, thanks for being a uh, joining us today. Really appreciate